hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to teen vogue and industry. This video is going to be particularly relevant to you if you are studying AQA A-level media studies as teen vogue currently appears as a set text on that specification. So it's important to understand where Teen Vogue came from. Originally, it was an American print magazine that had editions that appeared in other countries as well. However, the magazine industry has been declining rapidly over the last few decades. You understand more and more people are spending their time online and no longer buying print magazines. And so the magazine industry had to respond to this. And a lot of magazines ended up closing their print editions and becoming online magazines only. And that's exactly what Teen Vogue did. They closed their print magazine and from 2017 it became an online magazine only. Being online means that they can still produce content and target an audience but there are obviously less costs and less overheads because they don't have to go through the whole printing and distribution process in real life. It's all just online now. The magazine website is made by Condé Nast. Condé Nast is a massive global conglomerate company that makes a huge range of products. Originally, Teen Vogue was started by them as a spin-off to the very famous Vogue magazine. Teen Vogue was started to try and engage those audiences at a younger age. And that's a great way of trying to increase your profit. If you can engage a young audience early on, you can transfer them eventually from Teen Vogue to the kind of main Vogue brand. Condé Nast is a subsidiary of an even larger conglomerate called Advanced Publications. Um, they're massive, they're global, um, they've been around for over 100 years. Um, Condé Nast makes nine print magazines um, and 10 online magazines, so they're quite a big company anyway. They operate in 32 countries and they have 2,700 staff in America alone, with 6,000 staff globally. Condé Nast is also diversified, so as well as working within print, they also work online, they have TV, they have radio, uh, virtual reality, social media. So um, really diversified into other areas in order to try and reduce risk. Individual people can have quite a big impact on brands and their content as well. So for example, the current editor of Teen Vogue is a lady called Versha Sharma. She's the current editor in chief. Um, she's quite political. She's done a lot of political publishing before. It might have an impact, for example, on the way she chooses and the way she asks her staff to represent issues such as ethnicity, race and politics. Since becoming an online magazine, Teen Vogue has really done quite well. It started off in 2016 with 2.9 million visitors a month and within a year grew to 7.9 million visitors a month, which is huge. It has dipped since then. It's kind of levelled out more at around four and a half to five million a month. But that's still a very large number for what is seen as a reasonably niche magazine. On their website, you can see lots of articles that show the political beliefs of the company. So, for example, there are lots of anti-Trump articles and lots of pro-democratic articles on their website, which perhaps might reflect the political beliefs, values and ideologies of Condé Nast and certainly of the Teen Vogue brand. Please note that in the following section of the video, I'm going to discuss some of the more controversial content on the Teen Vogue website. You, your parents, your schools, your teachers and your IT filters at schools may have a problem with some of the words and images that I'm going to refer to from the Teen Vogue website. To avoid this content, please skip forward until 4 minutes and 33 seconds. Teen Vogue now has this kind of real image of a t online magazine that likes to push boundaries and be quite controversial. Don't forget that kind of makes it unique in terms of magazines. A lot of magazines tend to play it reasonably safe to appeal to a very mainstream audience. Whereas Teen Vogue likes to kind of be quite shocking, perhaps because it has a young audience, but also perhaps because it is trying to represent its brand as being more progressive. So, for example, when I looked at the website, um, there were articles about things like women who worked within sex work professions. There were uh, articles about abortion. There were articles about anal sex. So quite a lot of quite progressive, challenging content, which might be seen as quite shocking to some audiences, but which younger audiences may be quite interested to read. The online content for Teen Vogue is very popular. So for example, their social media pages have over 14 million people in total following them, which is a huge number of people, particularly when it's focused on quite a niche age range. The videos that it make have over 45 million views. So, um, you know, it shows that the online content is really quite popular for Teen Vogue. And that's potentially because 
Online content is obviously more engaging for a, a more modern audience who are spending their time online, but also because it's important for Condé Nast to direct people to their social media and to their website, because that's an, a way of them gaming, gaining advertising revenue. You know, don't forget, without the actual print magazine, they have nowhere printed for adverts to go that they can earn money from. So their website ad advertising slots are really important. So the more people they can get to visit that, either through actually visiting their website directly or clicking through from social media to their website, that's all going to be a way of generating more revenue. They also use a range of other online events and activities to try and generate further income. So, for example, they have a TikTok channel where they have tutorials. That TikTok channel is also monetized. Their YouTube channel is monetized as well. So they have lots of video based content online that can help earn them extra profits. They also organised a virtual prom online as well, I guess during Covid and lockdown, you know, a lot of people weren't able to attend their school proms. So organising these events online where people could buy tickets and could attend and take part in various activities and meet other people online uh, is another good way of marketing your brand and potentially making more money. Another event they organise is the Teen Vogue Summit each year and that's an event where young people can buy tickets and attend an actual in-person event where they can come together with other Teen Vogue audiences and they can go to workshops, they can hear speeches from public speakers and it's a great way of earning extra revenue and engaging those active audiences. To target a young audience they also have the use of Snapchat as well, obviously Snapchat being reasonably youthful demographic. Um, they have things like filters available on there, um, they can have custom content, they can ta take part in polls for the magazine. So, you know, really using new technologies that are available to try and engage more young, modern audiences. Sometimes magazines um, have to be quite careful about making sure it's clear what is an advert and what is not, because there are strict laws about this, both in America and in the UK. Um, now, in January 2020, there was quite a flattering article um, about Facebook and the US election. Um, and it was later revealed that this was actually a paid for advertorial um, and by Facebook. And so um, lots of companies revealed this and it was, it was quite a bit of a scandal that Teen Vogue hadn't made it clear that this was actually basically an advert. Um, and they actually had to delete the, the article because um, the companies found that it was not labelled properly. And there was quite a lot of backlash for that. So um, in terms of regulation, magazines sometimes do get in trouble when they break the rules, particularly for things like advertising and advertorials, paid for content. Sometimes companies have to regulate themselves. They will often do things to try and maintain their brand's reputation. For Teen Vogue, uh, at some point they employed a new editor-in-chief and unfortunately it was discovered before she'd even really started that she had made some previously um, quite offensive homophobic tweets on social media. Um, her posts were identified and lots of audiences reacted quite badly to this and so Teen Vogue and Condé Nast actually had to take action to maintain the reputation and the public identity of their company. So they sacked the editor-in-chief before she'd even really started. So reputations are very important for conglomerates. So that was my easy to understand guide to Teen Vogue and the magazine industry. Don't forget to check out my channel for lots of other videos that might be relevant for you for A-level media studies. And if you've got any questions, just leave a little comment below and I'll see what I can do.